The summer before this past summer, I had the occasion to speak to over 300 leaders, young leaders, from the 11th and 12th grades through the early years of college up north. I did a presentation that I thought went well, and when it came time for questions and answers, a young man, maybe 25 years old, who said he had no faith, but he did not also want to offend me, and went on to say that he couldn't figure out how a guy like me, who seemed kind of cool and open-minded, <laughs> could ever be part of such an oppressive institution as the Catholic Church. His statement out loud in front of over 300 young people knocked the breath out of me for a second. It was hard to hear, especially in front of all those people. And I found myself tearing up, actually. No tears here because he had hurt my feelings. I've heard that all before many times. But tears because in many ways, he was right. Before I could ever begin to get defensive, actually, I had to admit that out loud, that in many ways, certainly not all, our leaders had become bullies, self-righteous, arrogant, controlling, judgmental, males. But I was there standing in front of all those eyes that were just totally silent and focused on me, and it was my turn. And so I took a breath and I swallowed hard. And I broke the silence of those 300 plus eyes. Just waiting to hear what I was going to say next. And I said a quick little prayer. And then I tried to tell him, and really actually all of them, why I stayed. My own, why not only I would stay, but that I would actually choose to continue to represent, to represent an institution that once even the great St. Augustine himself in the fourth century described as a whore, who is also his mother. In this gospel story, Jesus could see that, that many were leaving him and his company, that his teachings were getting too hard to stomach, and you can almost see the sting in Jesus' eyes as he watched them go and, and as he asked them, will you leave me too? Peter and the others thought long and hard and answered, Lord, it is getting harder to belong to this company, but where else would we go? Where else would I go? You have the words of everlasting life. Peter's not talking about everlasting life after death in heaven. He's saying what I'm saying, that as imperfect as we may be, truly imperfect and flawed, we are made up of humans, and all our leaders are truly human, always were, always will be. But he's saying what I would also add, that as imperfect as leadership can be sometimes, and actually all of us really here in this church, we've gotten the tools with which right now we can challenge the same church that gave us those tools. We have been given the means and the possibility and the voice to challenge the very church that gave us those tools here in this worldwide communion, I found the tools to hammer out my salvation and to call the church the best I can amidst my own imperfections to greatness. That was my answer last summer, essentially, and it has been my answer for, for a really long time now. Here, is where I met a man who was a Jew and faced all the same toughness that we have faced, you and I, about being a Jew in his day. All the scandals of being Jewish, 
that confronted him and others, all the terrible leaders he had in his day, he had terrible leaders, but who never left his tradition ever, that tradition that he called his own. He was his own religion's harshest critic, but always still a Jew, a good Jew, a practicing Jew. And he spent his adult life, as one writer described it, trying to help his faith tradition manifest its best self and rediscover the immense wisdom that was there all the time and the ability to access the divine that it could offer him and did offer him. And not just him, but all people, really, they offered it to. I met the best of Judaism in him, here, in this community that understands the Jewishness of Jesus. Here is where I met the Jesus who taught me in no uncertain terms that God is love, that God is love, powerless love, mercy love, and that that powerless love is the greatest power in the universe because it and it alone can change the human heart. Here is where I discovered that that cross is not just an object, not just one of many symbols for us, but the symbol, bar none, a monumental manifestation of what love looks like at its most real, a monumental manifestation of what love looks like at its most real, that describes the essential patterns of all of life, of every life, and all life on this planet. Here, I found something bigger, something bigger than myself something that extends my reach to the ends of the earth and into all the peoples of all the cultures of the earth. Here is where I found the wisdom for life and love, especially through my elders, our elders, the saints and the mystics of this universal and ancient family. Here I learned that Christianity is a movement of reform in the whole world, as surely as Judaism was in its day, and still, that's more like leaven in dough, helping the whole world and all the peoples of the world rise up. Here is where I found uncovered for me the nitty gritty of an invested life the meaning and the purpose of my life. Here's where I met community. Community that leads me to the cross and to resurrection and makes sense out of all the crosses of my life. Here is where I discovered the meaning and possibility and always possibility of forgiveness. We make no bones that we are sinners. There are confessionals in every church, and everybody goes, including the leaders of our church, because we do not pretend that we are sinless, ever. But here's where I found forgiveness as a real possibility in my life. Here, is where I was given sacramental eyes. Sacramental eyes that helped me to see all of creation as so good. All the material world is so full of the spark of creation. Where I can see my own body is good and holy and deserving of my respect. And so is yours. And here I came to experience a really, truly optimistic view of creation and all creation. And here's where I fell in love with nature and can't go a day without getting out there somewhere, somehow, some way. 
because of what I've learned to see in every tree and every flower and every caterpillar, that everything's charged, as one of our poets said, with the grandeur of God. Everything a portal. And here's where I found the Eucharist. Where I found the Eucharist. Where I heard, this is my body. Echoed in every act of making love when a one person gives their body to another and says, this is my body in a committed, loving relationship. And that God is as real there as anywhere. Here's where I discovered that this is my body. is about the holiest thing we can say to matter. This is my body. In every act of making love in the same words right here on this altar. This is my body given for you. Here I discovered that the end times are now in this very life, in this very moment, and that it's all here, these eternal things. It's all here in every moment of my life. And here, here is where I was challenged to take responsibility for my life and not blame anybody else for my life. Here is where I realize that my choices are mine and I'm responsible for my choices. And if I'm ever a victim of somebody else's choices, I can turn to something that will make me not bitter, but better because of the victim I worship who knew what it was like to be a victim. No excuses in this church of ours. And here, here is where I found a respect for all of human life, from its very, very beginning till its very, very last breath, and more even in the respect I found here for knowledge, for the knowledge that all people can see the truth. Knowledge that built great universities because we respect knowledge so much. Here. Here is where I figured out what it means to try to be a man for others' sake. A man who spends his life the best he knows how for others' sake. And that the path of self-emptying, self-giving love is the only way to life. That service is not an option. And finally, maybe God's calling in with another. <laughs> but finally, finally, and please do not hear this as the least or just some little bookend to the rest. Here is where I learned that religion, if it is true, will always help me see that I have so much to learn from every religion of the planet and those who have none. That the truth is bigger than us. And while everything I know and trust I need is here, I have so much to learn from other religions who also have a piece of that truth that is their own. And that's why I seek atheists and seek Muslims and seek Buddhists and seek Hindus because they have so much to teach me because of where they stand different from where I stand. I cannot tell you how much I have learned about God from those who have none. I learned that here. The truth is universal and everywhere not just here. Even Cardinal Burke, when he was here, and you all probably remember him, <clears throat> he came to visit the CSC and he was walking out and he met a student who was coming in and he said, oh, or he, the student introduced himself and said, I'm not sure what to call you. I'm not Catholic. And the archbishop, then archbishop, said, well, can I ask what you are? And he said, yeah, I'm Methodist. And I was holding my breath, wondering what he's going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And he said, and I'll never forget this, he said, I hope you're a really good Methodist. As they say at the end of every flight, you know, there's a lot of airlines you can choose. <laughs> It is a world of infinite options and instant gratification. And there's always the temptation, at least my temptation, I can claim, to think that when things get tough or I don't all the way agree, that the grass is greener. The grass is greener in another community somewhere else and jump ship to run off to the next thing, to think that there's something or someone better out there to think that I can find someday the perfect community where it, that I will agree with perfectly, with perfect leaders, or the perfect person, actually, who will always make me happy. And quite honestly, as I read the world, it's only led the world to even greater disappointment and even despair to live with that true temptation. I am grateful that I have stayed for these 38 years of being a priest. And I am grateful that I have stayed for these 64 and a half years of being a human being. Because being part of this community has helped me in the end to become even more human. Just more human. I have stayed. And I have learned over the years that there is more holding us together than that tears us apart. and that everything I need to be free for others' sake is all right here under my nose. And even though there are particular cells of this mystical body that make it harder to get to the gold, the gold is here. Why do I stay? Why not, I ask? Everything I need is here, right here, with all those imperfections and flaws, here in this worldwide Catholic communion. Here for me, at least I can say, and everybody has to answer this for themselves, but here for me at least, I have found the words of everlasting life. <laughs>